Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. If you're in the east, good morning further west. Thank you for coming out to this webinar. Uh, my name is Jim Tobin. I'm president of a company called Carousel, an influencer and content marketing company. Very excited to bring to you today this webinar on how Crocs is reintroducing this young, iconic brand. I was not aware until recently um, how young Crocs is and um, and it's kind of surprising with how well they're known. Um, and what we got we get a chance to do today is here for not only um, their chief marketing officer, but also their director of global marketing uh, communication. So it's it's uh, it should be a great session. So um, Emily, if you could go to the next slide, we'll have set some ground rules, uh, not really ground rules, more reminders, and then uh, get into this as we go. Um, and really, this is a good chance to uh, figure out what your questions are. I don't know how often you've been able to talk to a CMO from a billion dollar brand before, um, but it's probably not every day, so fire your questions. There's lots of ways to do this. One is in the uh, GoToWebinar questions panel, which we have circled below. Just write your questions. We will be um, monitoring them and taking them at the end of the session. Uh, we are also, uh, the other way you can do that is to tweet. You can tweet at us, Carousel, C-A-R-U-S-E-L-E, -E, uh, or use the hashtag influencer webinar um, throughout, and we have uh, people monitoring that as well. Uh, and finally, we will be recording all of this. So if that impacts how you take notes, uh, know that afterwards, uh, likely tomorrow or the next day, um, certainly by the end of the week, you will have a copy of this recording with all the slides and all the audio. So um, that's all I had to say about that. So with that, I want to introduce our panelists. Um, Emily, if you can advance the slide. There we go. So Terrence Riley is the Chief Marketing Officer for Crocs, so his job is to figure out the strategic direction and how Crocs comes to life. Um, Terrence and I have been friends since high school, which is uh, an experience uh, in and of itself. That's another presentation. You'll have to register for that someday. Um, but we've known each other a long time, and he's had a meteoric rise in marketing. He's joined today by Emily Sly. She is the Director of Global Marketing Communications, as I mentioned earlier. She's also had a meteoric rise. She started in Crocs in 2009 as a customer service representative and has worked her way all the way up to being the director of global marketing. So really smart marketers here dealing with a very um, unique set of circumstances with a brand um, this young, this well-known, and this iconic. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to Terrence and Emily, and we'll be monitoring for your questions throughout, and I will have um, some questions as well as we go. So Terrence, Emily, take it away. Thank you so much, Jim. Good morning, everybody out there in, in, I guess it's webinar land. Thanks for joining us and spending a portion of your day with us. So yeah, as Jim mentioned, Crocs, we are going to celebrate our 15th anniversary this year, 1-5. So we haven't been around that long, but we have had an incredibly short history and our future looks incredibly bright as well. And so what we wanted to do is also acknowledge the great partners we've had along the way. Um, from Jim's carousel to some of the biggest and, and best agency partners in the world to help this one billion dollar global brand come to life in a variety of ways, both traditional and emerging. So everyone around the world knows this silhouette as Crocs. Pretty amazing for a 15 year old company founded in Boulder, Colorado, that stands up with Jumpman, Mickey Mouse, Apple and Coca-Cola as a globally recognized silhouette and brand. It's a pretty amazing trajectory that we've been on. And I've shown this slide to people around the world and I always get the same answer, Crocs. And so it's remarkable to be a $1 billion global brand after only a decade and a half. And it's been quite the evolution. I was fortunate to be given the keys to the, the marketing van back in 2015 and the first thing we decided to do is to reinvigorate our brand and go back to the icon that did start it all for us. And that icon, that classic Croc silhouette, is iconic, as I hope I just demonstrated. And so what we wanted to do in 15 and 16 is to reignite excitement for the brand with that icon that started it all. And we did some things that looked a little bit like this. We turned it into fun wearing occasion related silhouettes. So obviously where you're going to find Crocs the most, in this case, a tropical paradise. 
But you'll see on this page, there are lots of other wearing occasions from the pool and beach to outdoors to even a holiday seasonal campaign as we do sell lots of fur line clogs and other uh, warm and cold weather footwear. So an incredible reinvigoration for our brand led by more traditional marketing in 2015 and 16. And here, um, in 15, we had the campaign all around the icon. This year, 16, we strayed from that a bit. And it might have been a bit of a misstep when we look back at it, as I don't think consumers had fully embraced Crocs enough in 16 to go further from the clog than we did. So we learned from that and we redoubled our efforts around the clog. And it started with what you see in front of you, the prom. Prom obviously is an American institution and what happened in 2016 and is happening even this spring is high schoolers around the country are wearing Crocs to prom. Uh, yes, maybe with a little bit of our help, but it's a really organic movement where kids in 2016 and 17 more than ever before are celebrating their individuality and their own style and they're using Crocs to make their own style statement. And so we had some great success with prom content, prom contests, encouraging high schools across the United States to wear Crocs to prom. And it did some amazing things for us. We even had an entire high school in Minnesota wear Crocs to prom. And we saw a lot of best proms ever, thanks to Crocs and it going away from those uncomfortable shoes. And then in the fall of 2016, again, re-embracing and reigniting the classic croc, we launched our rock white crocs hashtag. And this led by style icons like Man Repeller, as well as lots of other fashion influencers as depicted here, began to reignite and get significant press coverage for our brand in a very unexpected way through fashion influencers. Obviously paying attention to Crocs, we've long been the, uh, not exactly the darling of the fashion community, um, but this changed our game and began to get different content out there from walk, rocking white Crocs. Again, a core audience were teens. Those same teens that wore Crocs to prom are also wearing white Crocs around their squads, whether it's a squad of fellow friends or fellow athletes on their cheer, cheer squads, volleyball teams, hockey, soccer, you name it. We began to see this trend in the Midwest where our store managers were reporting that students or moms are coming in and purchasing 10, 12, 15 pairs of white Crocs for teams in their local community. So a very interesting response, we created the squad the uh, teens and the fashion influencers campaign all around rocking white Crocs. And again, used influencers, as you see on this page, to help advance that storytelling, whether it's gold medal winning gymnasts, fashion influencers, or other folks who have significant followings. We began that journey in 2016. What we saw happen because of that is US footwear retailers were beginning to double their door count for white Crocs, a really uh, leading indicator in 16 for what has been happening in 2017, all around embracing a campaign using a hashtag and influencers to ignite something significant. And then the major news happened when Christopher Kane, the noticed, noted Scottish designer, gave us a call after seeing this trend in these fashion influencers beginning to talk about Crocs in a new way. He wanted to really set the fashion community on its ear by this. So Christopher Kane had Crocs sent them down the runway at London Fashion Week last fall. And oh, we were not expecting the response that we received overnight. Um, so from Women's Wear Daily and Vanity Fair to Vogue to Teen Vogue, the conversation shifted overnight about our brand, especially with the uh, fashion influencer community and fashionistas across the world. Suddenly they were um, questioning their judgment and realizing that Crocs could make a fashion statement because Christopher Kane just did. 
And so that trend began the fall of 16, and we've, we've really been catching up to the unbelievable press. And as a fun note, we knew that 2017 was going to be our year when Pantone unveiled their 2017 color of the year. It looks remarkably similar to the shoe and the color and the brand that started it all just about 15 years ago. We even made it under Kylie Jenner's Christmas tree last year. And more importantly, she shared it with her 10 million followers. So this is lit. Kylie Jenner thinks a pair of Crocs for Christmas is lit. Can't buy that kind of exposure. We didn't have to. Something was happening out there that was natural and organic, and we were just beginning to be the beneficiaries of all of that. But ladies and gentlemen, on this webinar, despite all of this, despite incredible strategy, despite the success, despite all of the press, still we get this. And this. <laughs> And lots of other internet memes. Some are funny, some hurt just a little bit, some hurt a lot. Um, but what we realize is that it's never been easier to judge. It's never been easier to judge. And Crocs, boy, we've been on the receiving end of that since our inception. Um, those internet memes are out there and we decided to recognize that we are different and that's a good thing. And there's people across the globe that are different, and that's a good thing. So what we've decided to do as a brand is to take that tension, that polarization, and send an invitation to all of those who embrace their one-of-a-kindness. And it's an invitation to come as you are. That's Crocs, in a nutshell. Come as you are. We don't judge because we've been judged, and we are just a brand. We can take it. But there's lots of people that can't, that are bullied every day, made fun of every day for being an incredibly unique individual, similar to Crocs as an incredibly in unique set of footwear. So come as you are. So, so why now? Yeah, those are Crocs. Why now? And those are Crocs. We wanted to really accelerate and esteem for our 15-year-old brand. We wanted to re reboot perception of Crocs by creating an identifiable movement around the world. Remember, we are a $1 billion global brand. We want to expand awareness and consideration of our key franchises, the classic and the shoes that started it all, but all, also elevating our style credentials, featuring new collections, unexpected styles, where people say, those are Crocs? I didn't know. Well, we need to help people know as marketers at Crocs. We want to connect emotionally, convert more loyalists, and reach neutrals and considerers. Boy, we have a loyal following across the world. We need to now move those neutrals and considerers over to that loyalist category. Get them to move on that marketing spectrum. In those key global markets that I've mentioned before, Japan, China, Korea, Germany, the United States, those are the big key markets for us, but lots of places around the world in addition to those key markets. So we want to do all of that, but we also never want to forget to celebrate that shoe that started it all, that classic that we love, we're proud of, it's our Big Mac, it's everything, it's the shoe that started it all. We sell millions of pairs of those every year, and this year we're selling just a couple of extra thanks to all of this marketing activation. Activation that has powerful imagery and content that's aspirational for a brand that, let's be frank, people don't necessarily consider as aspirational. We also want to make that move from traditional that I showed you in 15 and 16, which in addition to broadcast TV included print and out of home, into exclusively a digital and social marketing plan around the world where we have demonstrated proven impact. And this year, as you've probably read about, utilizing celebrities who have a story to tell celebrities with humanity, humility, and humor, celebrities that are perfect for Crocs. 
So we're introducing in 2017 Drew Barrymore. The actress, depending on your age, has been a little sister or a big sister for most of your life. John Cena, the WWE superstar and actor and renaissance man, and the gentleman who's made the most Make-A-Wish grants than anybody alive. Henry Lau, a Korean Chinese superstar for our Asian contingent. And Yuna. Yuna is part of the K-pop sensation in Korea and is well known throughout Southeast Asia. And so all these folks came on board for 2017 and each play a different role for our brand um, and have a different story, a different come as you are story to tell to send out that global invitation to people around the world. Calling all one of a kind and creative minds. And always flip the script. It's time to stand up. So come as you are, a powerful manifesto utilizing our incredible celebrities to show consumers a new side to their favorite celebrities and folks that you know. So some great content that began to um, share the message and is spread digitally and socially across the world. One thing as a mother I know I'm going to be doing with my girls is I'm not going to be in the mirror fretting. I'm not going to try to be someone I'm not. I made their lunch. I got them to that class. I didn't lose my cool when my daughter was like flipping out in a taxi cab. That's really great. Okay, another day down. I'm going to try to make them, my daughters, feel at ease, being who they are, doing silly dances, singing when they feel like it. I remember the walk to the school bus at the very least five times, shoved down, toppled down. I asked my dad, is it okay if I start working out? By the time I showed up at high school, I was big. The guys who were pushing me down were kind of like, Cool. Never once did I ever get back at any of those guys. As horrible as the time as it was for me, it was a catalyst for me to find a passion of my life. Everybody goes through those moments of self-doubt. And whether they're a moment or whether they're a wall that you can't climb over, come as you are means be authentic. It means don't be afraid to be who you are. I'm very emotional, as cold as I seem sometimes. I'm a sucker. I'm like stupid in love. If that doesn't make me cool, whatever. I don't want to be cool. So again, great storytelling that's brand right, that really reflects the come as you are message that we're looking to do. And so we have interviews, we have the manifesto, we even take folks behind the scenes with our celebrities. Hi everybody, I'm Drew Barrymore right now. I'm wearing the um, Isabella's. And by the way, my kids love these shoes, um, especially the ones that light up or you can put little characters in. So now it's become very personal for me because Crocs is in my home and on my kids and I'm working with them. And so it feels like an all encompassing emotional story for me. So come on, come play with us. So again, showing a different side to Drew and having our fans come into her world and our world to come as you are. I didn't see you there. Hey, what's up guys? I'm John Cena. We got Crocs. And of course, I'm here. Comfortable, cool, breathable, full range of motion. Look at that. Yeah, I'm ready. It's game day. Hold on, wait a second. So fun stuff and fun content with celebrities with these fans around the world. So you can see what began to happen with our celebrities posting, with us being able to retweet, began a movement in March and April that is only beginning for our brand. So you can begin to see just a smattering of the comments, you know, thanks for having Yuna, be surprised at the sudden increase in sales, Yuna goddess, this is now 
changing the conversation of our brand with celebrities and using their equity with their fans. The conversation for Crocs has changed 180 degrees in just a few short weeks in 2017, which began in the fall of last year with the incredible coverage we received of Christopher Kane. Here's Henry Lau, for example. 这次真的很开心很荣幸可以代表 so we were incredibly surprised by the reaction to Henry. We knew it would be big, but this is a gentleman that's greeted at airports in the United States from his fan base, um, just waiting to catch a glimpse of their favorite superstar. So this has been an, also an incredible addition to our team. And what we're doing is, at Crocs, in addition to the classic, we want to market key product franchises. You know, we sell lots of shoes. We have lots of different styles. But obviously, our product merchants, they identify the key product franchises across the world and you begin to see how we market our classic the shoe that started it all as i continue to say the classic clog you can see how this begins to take shape through online advertising whether it's drew or john our croc band franchise which is an update and a remarkably popular one especially in asia to the classic that that band around the bottom makes it the croc band different but incredibly popular across the world um, our Swift Water collection, obviously with the Crocs DNA, but different than the, the classic Croc that started it all. Um, but you begin to see how the copy points, the celebrity activation, and the product tells a unified story across the globe. Our Isabella collection, obviously far more feminine, um, shows with Drew and Unit especially, but again, a united product storytelling campaign with or without our celebrity activation to coincide with it. Our City Lane Roca, a newer franchise for us, one of our top selling franchises so far in 2017, thanks in part to our celebrity activation. And you begin to see how one brand tells one story while featuring lots of different shoes. <laughs> 真的是Crocs,我知道这个可能看起来就像一个很普通的一个鞋子,不是真的是Crocs,你看,我平常私底下就很喜欢穿Crocs的鞋子,就真的很舒服,也觉得很漂亮。2017年Crocs会有很多新
and get our fans engaged with our brand. So it, so far this year in 2017, we have partnered with over 100 influencers to help tell our brand and product stories. We wanted to um, add style credibility and to help to introduce some of the new products that Terrence had mentioned and show consumers that while we still are proud um, of our classic clog, we also have a, a variety of new styles um, that you can pair with different kinds of outfits and different wearing occasions. Um, we also worked with our influencer partners to launch um, our various marketing programs and campaigns so far in 2017 starting in March with what we called our Dare to Wear contest. So we knew that consumers um, will wear and love our classic clogs um, around the beach, the pool, maybe to walk their dogs. We also wanted to show um, consumers that you can wear Crocs to a variety of occasions. You can even wear Crocs with socks and Crocs with your pet. So we partnered with influencers as well as with our celebrity ambassadors to basically dare our consumers to show us how they wear Crocs in a variety of occasions. We launched this with the contest and with the support of all of these um, wonderful influencers that we partnered with. Consumers were reacted very well to this program, um, especially to Crocs and Socks, which we were really pleased with. It's kind of an irreverent, fun trend um, that while it used to have somewhat negative connotations, we can see now that it's actually really fun and um, relevant to our younger consumers. Just recently, we launched a Mother's Day program where we partnered with Drew Barrymore as well as our, our influencer partners to introduce um, this program around celebrating one-of-a-kind moms. Um, the unique approach to this was that winners for the contest would receive a personalized greeting from Drew as well as a, a custom Crocs gift basket. So we partnered with these influencers to help tell the story and to help get consumers engaged around this contest. Um, we have more to come in the next few weeks around this, but we were really pleased to see how consumers reacted to it, and we felt like it was a great way to integrate celebrities with our influencer partners to help show how you can wear Crocs um, with more stylish outfits as well as how you can help to build, build that emotional connection with the brand. So the big question is, is this working? So, so far, as Terrence mentioned, we have seen triple-digit increases in PR impressions year over year. So this is partly due to our collaboration with Christopher Kane, um, with our celebrity ambassadors, but also for all of these kind of unique programs that we've been running. Um, you've seen us in Vogue, um, possibly, so Meet the People, Trends, and Items that will rule the, the world, will rule fashion 2017. We were really pleased to see that Crocs is actually included on this list. But that wasn't our only Vogue hit. We also saw an article come out speaking about how Crocs are the new Birkin stocks. You'll see us in some um, kind of more high fashion spreads, like this example from Glamour in um, Germany. We also had a spread in InStyle featuring Drew Barrymore, our celebrity ambassador, um, talking about the campaign as well as um, a highlight around the Christopher Kane collaboration. We also had a variety of um, different interviews with our celebrities speaking about Crocs and about the campaign. And you may have also seen this on Extra. Drew Barrymore has produced a few hits in the box office, and her latest project is a hit with her entire family. This is what 42 looks like for Drew Barrymore, and she's never felt better. I'm so much happier now in my 40s than I was in my 20s. I come as I am because I can't help it. I am me. I am utterly me. The utterly unique Drew Barrymore opening up her home only to extra, showing off her latest project. It's become very personal for me because Crocs is in my home and on my kids. The mom to daughters Olive and Frankie teaming up with the shoe brand Crocs for their Come As You Are campaign. I'm going to try to make them, my daughters, feel at ease, being who they are, doing silly dances, and being comfortable in their shoes. My daughters and I were like, okay, strap front, strap back. I'm a strap front. Pro wrestler John Cena also getting in on the shoe game. They also can be used as weights. They're also a makeshift kettlebell, so always keep an extra pair around. Having fun in his old Venice Beach shopping is that staple of Come As You Are. More Come As You Are Crop Styles at ExitTV.com. Um, from a social perspective, we are really pleased with the performance that we've seen so far this year, with even more to come. Um, the posts that we've seen so far are, have been the most liked, shared, and viewed social posts in Crocs history, which is something we are really proud of. Um, our shift to kind of investing more in digital and social has really seen great results, and, and we're so excited to be continuing to progress through 2017. But we're not quite done. 
So the future is coming. Yeah, the future looks very bright for us. It's uh, been an incredible few years for Emily and myself at Crocs. As, we've, uh, as you see, the game is changing for our brand. You know, when we started, it would be impossible to think that Vogue would call us a trend. But as you saw from Emily, that just happened. Um, you'd never think a designer would send Crocs down the runway in London, and, and that happened. And you never thought you'd see Drew Barrymore and John Cena uh, wearing Crocs and talking about Crocs. But more importantly, it's about come as you are and really inviting people into our community. Um, so the future looks really, really bright for Crocs. Um, and it's starting to show up in our bottom line. Um, and obviously with our wholesale partners, our e-commerce results, um, as obviously that's what drives the business. It's less about marketing speak and more about how many pairs we're selling. And obviously that is up uh, considerably as well um, because just today we posted our Q1 earnings and our stock is up 16% today. Um, and obviously our product and marketing were the highlights of that story. And Q2 is really when we get busy at Crocs as the Crocs selling season begins in April, May, June, July as summer arrives and people need to go to the beach and lots of places and they need Crocs to come as they are. So thank you for spending the last uh, 36, 40 minutes with us. Um, it's been our, our pleasure and I think we turn it back over to Jim um, and potentially some questions. Yeah, absolutely. And Terrence, Emily, thank you very much. There was a ton of information packed in there. Um, I loved your pacing. I will say I'm wearing my uh, Crocs Santa Cruz today. They are my first pair of Crocs. Um, but now that I saw the Swift Water, um, I may have to suck up to you even more, Terrence, and, and get another pair. They, they, they look good. Um, I know so a guy. Question. I know a guy. Go ahead. You know a guy. <laughs> um, so a, a couple of questions here. So you mentioned, Terrence, the um, – you know, as, as, as you were explaining the come as you are uh, uh, C-line, the bullying uh, angle and sort of we know what it's like to be picked on. We know what it's like to be bullied. Um, and, and there's some, uh, you know, references to that in what John Cena says and what Drew Barrymore says. Uh, and I was wondering how you, how that sort of evolved. I mean, I, I could see a, a discussion where that becomes really a focus of, you know, um, of, of of you know an anti-bullying campaign being your strategy, but at the same time, Crocs is about fun, and you know bullying is obviously a very serious issue. Was there a lot of sort of internal debate on how to how to play that? Yeah, I think you know what it's it's very real to us. I, I think for everyone on the webinar, this was born long before the uh, election season of 2016, um, and. It's real for our brand. You know, what I've seen through a lot of brands post-November is a lot of brands trying to, um, to grab on to some society issues that, okay, sounds good. But for Crocs, it's really, really real. Um, you know, there's a reason why those internet memes are in our presentation. You know, it doesn't take uh, a quick internet search to see a lot of funny internet memes about our brand just because we exist. And so we recognize that we need to celebrate the individuality of us and do that through the folks that wear us every day because there are millions of folks that love our brand and don't care what other people think. So it's more about celebrating people's individuality than it is about anti-bullying, although that's certainly a real issue. And we've discussed that internally. Um, and it'll also be a feature of some incredibly moving content that we did shoot with John Cena. You all got a glimpse of him in Venice Beach, California. But what you did not see in this presentation that will be available in June is a far wider ranging discussion that John has in Venice Beach with folks that didn't always come as they were um, and battled with some things. And so we celebrate how they embrace their individuality, and we'll be sharing that with the world in June. And the only thing I would add to that is, you know, Terrence mentioned the word celebration. So one of the filters that we had with all the content that we were creating as part of this campaign was that we really wanted consumers to feel good after watching it and engaging with it. So while we did touch on some of these more serious issues, we did want to ensure that, you know, the consumer was taking away a positive message and was feeling more upbeat about what we were bringing to market. 
Yeah, absolutely. So Hillary asked the question of, has your focus been solely on influencer partnerships or do you have strong partnerships with other brands as well? Good question. I, I don't know that we have significant partners with other brands beyond the celebrities who are their own brands and Christopher Kane, of course. Um, but we do not have any partnerships. We've kicked the tires on some collaborations with some other brands, um, and we're looking to do that. Of course, we have an incredible licensed business. You know, so we have some of the best from Star Wars and Disney to uh, Marvel. We, we have some of the best licensed products in terms of that, but um, that's currently the extent of it. But we're definitely looking to create more product collaboration opportunities. And what are the little things called that go in the crock holes? Those are called gibbets. Gibbets. Yes. There's a little fun trivia for you to share with your yep. friends. They always autocorrect so, as gibbets, but <laughs> gibbets. So I am gibbet free, but my kids have many gibbets. Um, so a question about trends. You mentioned you know being called a trend. I think it was in vogue, um, and I could see that being a bit of a curse and a blessing. Uh, for any brand, but also yours, you, you had a sort of meteoric rise um, years ago, and now you're sort of swinging back. Um, and, you know, do you view trends as sort of a, a, a double-edged sword here in terms of, uh, you know, long-term sustainability of the brand? Good question. I think uh, we're, we're, we're riding the wave. You know, this, these things come in waves. We were certainly an incredible fad when we were first introduced. And then there were certainly some lean years. And so we're obviously riding that wave and we're prepared to ride it as long as we can while preparing ourselves for when we're not the trend, um, which is why we're also introducing, while we are quote unquote trendy, the newer styles and, and styles that people are less familiar with that, as you pointed out, you're wearing your Santa Cruz's and I know you've never been more comfortable. Um, so to get more people wearing and, and introduced to other styles. But there's also a very another very interesting component at work for our brand. Um, today's 20-year-olds, college campuses across the United States and, and folks in their young 20s, guess which was their first shoe? If we're a 15-year-old brand, today's 21-year-olds, when they were six years old, we were new. and it's amazing how many stories we hear that we were somebody's first shoe mm -hmm. because the Crocs silhouette is very familiar. It's a very fun brand, and especially when you're five, six, seven. And now those kids are 19, 20, 21, and they've grown out of being uh, part of the crew, if you know what I mean, and they're more celebrating their individuality, and they're coming back to us um, in incredible numbers. So they still have a pair of Nikes, for their fashion athletic, but when they're walking around in, in their closet, they have a pair of Crocs to re-embrace. It's a bit of nostalgia, amazingly, for a 15-year-old brand. So we're also seeing that, and we expect that to continue as today's 21-year-olds become 30-year-olds and start families of their own. Interesting. And my 18-year-old has about 10 pair in her closet, as I've told you before. She's a huge fan um, of, of the brand. So. Um, the other thing that struck me as you as you were um, uh, going through this is, you know, early on as uh, marketers early in, you know, we're the same age, Terrence, in our careers, marketing was a little bit more ivory tower. It was a little bit more sitting, sure, there were some focus groups, but sitting there figuring out what we wanted our message to be and who we were going to yell it at on TV or, or print or whatever. Um, so much of what you talked about is, a mix of how you want to portray the brand and versus how the high schoolers think of the brand and, and how they are portraying the brand in white crocs, uh, white clogs, for example, or how the fashionistas are taking it. It must be a very different job these days to sort of balance, you know, the, the, the long-term planning with the sort of vagaries of the fashion world and, and having to react to them. Oh, without a doubt. You know, the, the cycle is immediate now. Um, you know, obviously in the social space to be able to react um, is, is one thing because that's that happens in minutes now, um, seconds. So that's the, the biggest one. You know, and the influencer um, component of what Emily took you through and, and it's what been, what's been a hallmark of 2017 for us is still, you know, it's still evolving. You know, we still need to measure, you know, we're already planning 2018. 
and how do we uh, continue to utilize influencers, but how do we do it in a different way? You know, we have, uh, we met with Drew Barrymore yesterday for 2018 and are discussing some really innovative ways to, um, to, to in, introduce influencers into our campaign because she's still our hero. So um, it's exciting, but it's also challenging to know who's who, what's what, and what influencers are coming and which ones are going. Another thing that we yeah, really I like, oh, go ahead, Emily. It, yeah, it's just trying to listen to our consumers. So um, Taryn's took you through the Rock White Crocs program. So that was really founded um, based on some trends that we were understanding were happening among tweens. Um, so by listening to that and understanding how people were re were interacting and uh, working with Crocs kind of outside of us, it was great to be able to listen to that and then action it and, and figure out what was the best way to continue to drive and amplify those trends that we were already seeing. Yeah, I mean, that was real listening. I mentioned that earlier, you know, our head of retail called me and said, you know, I've had a few store managers in Minnesota call me and saying white crocs are running out the door in bulk with teams purchasing them so we knew there was a kernel there and that's where we got started and it exploded the white crocs phenomenon when i mentioned it to people here who have kids uh, you know teenagers or, or thereabouts in sports every one of them nodded their heads and said oh yeah crocs is the shoe for you know after the after the game before the game kind of thing so um the other thing I find interesting about your influencer strategy, given that that's what I, I do for a living, is a lot of celebrity influencers, there's been the, the Kendall Jenner and the Fire Festival fiasco and the, the authenticity of what these people are endorsing. I think it's interesting that you've used um, the approachability of a Drew Barrymore and the, the sort of life story of John Cena that he shared in that video. But but then you go all the way down to the to the micro-influencer, which is also sort of a nod to your um, not underground but sort of groundswell brand that you are you know you were you were accepted and you were sort of pulled up from the bottom versus sort of thrust on the market from the from the top and I I find that to be a very um, a very wise well-balanced strategy that I don't see a lot of brands using so I don't know that there's a question there as much as uh, it, it it seems to be very well well considered well we appreciate that starting from the guy that wrote the book or two books on that. So. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So with that, I think we're going to wrap this up, uh, give you all back a few extra minutes in your day. Um, I appreciate you all taking the time to come out to the webinar. I very much appreciate Terrence Riley and Emily Sly of Crocs for sharing uh, their insights on how they're taking this brand. What I love about marketing and I love about being in the agency business is every brand has a unique set of challenges. And I think what you see here with Crocs is they have huge advantages in their iconic brand and they also have interesting challenges such as those internet memes and it's been a great experience to hear how you guys are, are playing both sides of that. So again, thank you very much for attending. Emily and Terrence, thank you very much for the insight. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much.